the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Hey everybody, God bless you. I'm excited about this quick study. I mean, it's probably gonna be like two or three uh, segments, right? But the whole point is that I want to focus on the teaching of Christ. And the fact is that we are supposed to be believers. And as believers, we are believers in the doctrine and the teaching of Christ. That means we don't do the steal, kill, and destroy. We do the things that are acceptable in the will of God. And, and I, I brought this up because I see so many times people want to, to look at church history and say, I don't want to be a Christian because of the history of the church. And they have a valid position, don't they? Because a tree is known by its fruit. You can call yourself a Christian, but it's your actions, your deeds, is what's coming out of your mouth. And if it's discrimination and hate, if steal, kill, and destroy is coming out of your mouth for the whole purpose of putting other people down, you are not a Christian and you need to say that. You need to stop offering. Stop lying. Stop putting the, you know, trying to cover yourself as a Christian. You want to be a Christian, you have a choice. You have a choice. So choose. Choose life for them. But if you want to choose life, that applies for not only you, but everybody around you, whether they're black, white, or brown, or whatever. You're supposed to love them. And that's what this teaching is about. So I consider it a quick teaching, but yes, if I take two or three slides, A, B, and C. But the whole purpose is we need to learn to love one another. I put down here, this is the title that I have here. And I'm on one computer, so I have to use it this way. But it said, when, and I've left the title, that word out did, when did the Christian doctrine, or when the Christian doctrine added, steal, kill, and destroy? And that scripture I'm coming from is John 10, 10. When, when did steal, kill, and destroy come as a part of the gospel? If you want eternal life, when did you accept, steal, kill, and destroy? You didn't. You shouldn't. Because that's not the doctrine. Amen. So I put that down as a title. Because it's important for you to ask that question. Why is it acceptable to steal, kill, and destroy? Why is it acceptable to go against even the Ten Commandments? Why is it acceptable to go against the six things that God hates? Yea, seven is an abomination to him. Why? There is no excuse. And I'm going to give you in this study, you're going to talk, you're going to see historical references starting all the way back in the third century of steal, kill, and destroy. This doctrine of militarism, this doctrine of hate, this doctrine of stealing, this doctrine of killing, it goes all the way back starting in the third century because man corrupted the gospel and it brought it all the way up to 2023 of people sitting there doing steal, kill, and destroy opposed to loving one another. That's what God asked you to do. Read, and I'm encouraging you, please, every individual, read the New Testament. Study the New Testament. I'm not telling you not to study the Old Testament. I'm telling you to study the New Testament if you want to call yourself a Christian. And if you want to study to call yourself a Christian, then you go by the gospel that Christ taught. Those letters in the New Testament all based on the foundation of the gospel and they should reflect on the gospel and that's what i'm trying to tell you if you want to be a christian be a christian don't be uh don't be a world 
pleaser or a man pleaser, but be a Christian, be a follower of Christ. Learn what it means to be a Christian so people can see your light shine. Your light shine is not going to be from bigotry. Your light shine is not going to be from hate. Your light shining is not, your light of Christ is not shining through you based on uh, you acting like a bad character, an evil character, discriminating character. Your character is based on the teaching of Christ. So I hope you enjoyed the seconds getting ready to come up. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to make comments. You want to make comments so we can continue to stay on track. But just remember, Jesus, Yeshua, is our personal Lord and Savior. And he is the way. We all should preach the gospel pointing toward Christ, not pointing toward our uh, ministries or, uh, or uh, whatever group you think you are representing. It should be toward Christ. And if you do and to love one another, you'll make a difference in this world, man. God bless you. I hope you love the segment. And I'll see you when I see you. God bless. Bye-bye. Hey, everybody. God bless you. Hey, I, you know, we've been traveling uh, this week. Uh, and so we didn't have a chance to do a Sunday service. <clears throat> but one of the things that I would like to do uh, is cover a topic that have been dealing with about steal, kill, and destroy, and how was that actually added into the Christian doctrine? Uh, we need to talk about that because I think it's a, a lot of confusion <clears throat> within the body of Christ, and that confusion been perpetuated by uh, leadership starting all the way back to the first century uh, of when Christianity started to spread. Uh, There's this desire uh, to become militaristic. Uh, and that's something that we need to all need to understand. And people who are not Christians need to understand that this is not who we are. This pattern of behavior started almost 2,000 years ago. Going past the teaching of Christ to do the things that really benefited man, benefited selective people, of power. And we need to understand that these things consistently be, are done to influence uh, the world and saying that we are Christians. But when you ask what a Christian is, you're going to get different answers. Because the only true answer, and this is in John 14, 6, Christ said, I'm the way, the truth, and the light. No one comes to the Father but by him. Not by me, not by any ministry, but by him. He calls all of us through the gospel, calls us to preach the gospel that points toward him. But many of us, and I'm talking church history, have been pointing toward the will and desire of man to give men more authority to do bad things, contrary to the teaching of Christ. You know, I was talking to a friend the other day, it is, it is very clear that Christianity is a pacifist gospel. So what are you talking about? Well, you don't forget the, the Bible clear Christ into one time turned on the cheek. The Bible, Christ taught us to love one another, not to sit there. And, and some of you listening right now, sitting there saying, no, uh -uh, no, 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 uh, I'm, I'm supposed to be a bad joker. I'm supposed to be the beat. I'm supposed to look, look. Most of you sit there thinking, I'm supposed to steal, kill, and destroy. 
for the gospel's sake. Now, what part of the killing, the stealing, or destroying equals the gospel? And you know it. Every last one of us, every last person, every ministry out there knows that Christ did not till, teach us to steal, kill, and destroy. Now, many of them will sit there and say, what about the Old Testament? <laughs> Old Testament dealing with Israel, the children of Israel, and their relationship with God. A number of you who call yourself Christians, and you can be Messianic Jews, but a number of you that are called Christians, are Hebrews. You're not attacking a promised land. You're not called to attack a promised land. You're to call to receive Christ. Even the Jewish people, the Hebrews, are also called to receive Christ. The whole world is called to receive Christ and to do and go His way, not our way. And that's what I want to be able to talk about real quick, uh, because we didn't have a chance to have a Sunday service. <laughs> and I'm still traveling, but I figure I think it's important to at least set the tone of where we need to be going for um, this year, the remainder of this year, is it's time to call into action those who are believers to be able equip yourself by studying the Word of God and, and confronting ministries, confronting believers who operate outside the teaching of Christ. And you use the Word of God. You don't go about it based on your opinion. Because it ain't about your opinion. It's about what's written. And so they sit there and say, <clears throat> well, we want to create laws to stop abortion. Got you. But abortion is not just dealing with the conception of a child. It deals from the conception to the grave, meaning up to an old age and death. In other words, pro-life is pro-life from conception to the grave. And just in case some of you don't understand what I'm talking about, you can be conceived, you're born, you grow as a child, you grow to become a man or a woman, you grow old, and then you eventually die. That's what I'm talking about. And therefore, we as pro-life wants to consider all the life of every human being throughout the, their lifetime. That's pro-life. But we, we play we play the politics. We will sit there and do it for selfish reasons. We're allowing some people to 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 discriminate based on color of skin. Uh, that well these women have a high, you know, talking about like people of color have a high uh, mortality rate in birth. Uh, because something is going on. And we know that. But because the focus is not pro-life based on everybody, it's based on a particular persuasion or ethnic group. So, so we as Christians need to say, yes, we're pro-life. Yes, all life matters. Yes, black lives matter. Yes, white lives matter. Yes, blue life matters. All life matters to us. All life are precious to us because all life are precious to our Lord and Savior, Christ. And we need to let the people in the world know that instead of sitting there uh, living, receiving, teaching, and acting on false doctrine. You, all of us have the Bible in our hands. It's not, you, I'm guaranteed to it, you're not going to get the New Testament that deals with teaching to steal, kill, and destroy. 
you read the gospel for yourself, you read the New Testament for yourself, Christ said to love one another. Amen. So let's look at that. So what I want to do is show the uh, topic that I'm focusing on. And I, I, I got to do it different uh, this time because I only have one computer screen, so it's very difficult. So look at this. The question is for the title is when the Christian doctrine added steal, kill, and destroy. Because most people call themselves Christian. We're talking about two billion in this world. When did steal, kill, and destroy was added to the teaching, the living of the gospel? And let me make sure, if you're a Christian, the Bible said a tree is known by its fruit, then you should live as a Christian based on the Bible. And I don't care whether you got an NIV, Amplified Bible, or the King James Version, read, you are responsible for preaching the teaching of the New Testament. I, 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 the Old Testament is for studying, for examples, and everything else. Don't get me wrong. But you, 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 your doctrine, the mere fact that you call yourself a Christian, has to be based on the teaching of the gospel. That's what we want to talk about. All right. But just in case you got some Old Testament things, which we do, let's look at the Old Testament concerning the Ten Commandments. <laughs> the first part of the command deal with the relationship between you and God, which you should not ever believe that you don't both have a personal relationship with God through your Lord and Savior Christ. But that's going about the relationship between man and man. Exodus chapter 20. This is where God came down and talked to the children of Israel, Mount Sinai. And he said, in this one, I'm going to start with verse 12, where it says, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the earth, which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Look at this. Verse 13. Thou shalt not kill murder. Now, I was looking at church history. And we can come up more recent history in the 1900s, the late 1800s and the 1900s during the Jim Crow laws, the lynching of people of color, the discrimination of people that came here from Europe, came here from uh, China, people that came from Mexico or South America. There were a lot of discrimination. And in the case of African Americans who came here by force, is still dealing with different variations of discrimination. There were a period where you talked about strange fruit on a tree because many were lynched. Some lynching were a almost like a tree, like a spectator sport where people had their Sunday bass on, and maybe came from service, and witnessed a brutal killing of a human being. And either the church, I would say they say the church, those professing Christian churches were part of the lynching. It definitely wasn't part of the I advocated not to do it. There were people advocating, supporting, encouraging, just like there's people in political differences now encouraging to do bad things. Just like January 6th, there were a lot of Christian flags at that event saying they're doing in the name of Jesus. And you know that you won't find any of those actions. And that's what I'm trying to tell people. You won't find those actions in the Christian teaching. You know it. Look at that. Thou shalt not commit adultery. 
because a lot of people talk about homosexuality, but they don't talk about the fact is that <laughs> this one is very clear, thou shalt not commit adultery, and yet you do have it happening in the church. And the funny thing I, I was thinking about doing the slave trade when they're talking about buck breaking, homosexuality was introduced during the slave trade, during slavery, and I didn't hear any church as in Africa in the day. They did not do it then where homosexuality was introduced. Or we didn't hear about the fight about against abortion when they were taking slave babies and using them as live bait for hunt crack honey crocodiles. You're gonna find that in the gospel. But yet people call themselves Christians did that. Look at this, thou shalt not steal. <laughs> well look, <laughs> the slave trade was a good example of that, right? Or even slavery itself, where you took people's babies from them, where you took Family that broke them up, and 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 yet you sit there and justify it with these people are not people; they're property. Knowing that the fact is that they're people, you can call you can call uh, it's like this: an apple is an apple. You can call a banana all you want, but it's an apple. You know it's an apple. You may sit there and say, "No, we made that a banana." We made a law that said this apple is called a banana, but in reality it's still an apple. Same thing as a human being. Doesn't matter color of skin, you can and I know some people will will go die to hell sitting there saying, No, 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 we, we got we got we have a right. Well, find it in the scriptures, find it in the New Testament that you have a right to do the brutalities that was committed during slavery or during the uh, Jim Crow laws. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. That's in the Old Testament. How many people have lied? How many people who, who have been to jail because somebody accused of a rape? How many people have bear false witness in order to get over on somebody, in order to get somebody else in trouble. But the scripture says, thou shalt not do that. Hubble 17, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife, nor that manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor. Uh, that's the Old Testament. If some since some people sit there and say, "Well, I can go, I can refer to my actions based on the Old Testament," because it's it's easy to go and talk about attacking somebody in the Promised Land and do all the things that God told them to do in the doing the Old Testament, but that's not the teaching of Christ. God gave a specific teaching of Christ and for us to conform to the image of Christ and we conform to the image by you reading you personally reading the New Testament for yourself you can read Old Testament as examples for understanding for man in the relation with God or a nation in the relation of God that's the Hebrews Israel but for us we are only grafted in because of Christ. We only have righteousness because of Christ. But if you don't do what he tells you to do, then then you he can't help you because you chose. Just like God gave you the right to choose Christianity, choose salvation, he also gives you the right to choose to do his will or not. Look at this. In the Old Testament, since you Old Testament saints focus. But like I said, you're not gonna find the steal, kill, and destroy in the in New Testament. But here's the Old Testament too. These are things that the Lord hate, yea, seven of abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hand to shed into blood, a heart that divides the wicked imagination, feet that is swift and run into mischief, a false wicked speaker's lies, and he that saw a discord among his brethren. Among his brethren. So these are the things you'll find in the Old Testament, if you're an Old Testament saint.
because I know most of you not, I know God didn't tell you to discriminate. I know God didn't tell you to to teach your children to discriminate or to hate or to kill or destroy. Those, those things were not part of the Christian doctrine. And if you don't want to be a Christian, just stop calling yourself a Christian until you conform to his image. God bless you. I hope you enjoyed that study. And I want you to meditate and chew. And then I do want to encourage it again. Study the Word. Study the New Testament. The teaching of the New Testament for yourself. And understand you need to have, must have, a personal relationship with God. We don't need a relationship that's going to separate us from God. And just because we get approval by man, man can't get you into heaven. Man can't get you eternal life. You can ask your pastor now. You can ask your deacon. You can ask your associate pastor. Can you give me eternal life? And you know the answer will be, no, I can't. But if you study the Word of God and make Christ Lord, you make a difference. Amen? All right. I hope you enjoyed it. That was just my quick closing uh, for all the videos. We'll probably have A, B, C. I don't think we'll have a D. Um, but the point is, please listen to the studies at your leisure. And don't forget that Yeshua is Lord. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. I appreciate those who have subscribed. And I look forward to continuing to just put out products that focus on us pointing toward Christ, not man. Amen. God bless you. And I'll see you when I see you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord.